All right, so if any of you are like me, you've had memories with your car that are all kind of relatable. So like if you're road, if you're, uh, road tripping with your family to a, another, uh, another state, or if you're cruising down Main Street at one in the morning blaring music with your friends, annoying people, or um, going to a drive-in with a special someone or something, um, there's quite a history behind the car that gets you there. Um, and it's important to remember that because it hasn't always been as easy as just jumping in a car. So today I'll tell you about a little bit of history about the automobile. I'll give you three main points. Uh, the beginning of cars, the invention of it, um, vehicles being made available for everybody, and cars today. So first, we'll start out with the definition. Um, according to Merriam-Webster, an automobile is a vehicle used for carrying passengers on streets and roads. I use the word automobile instead of cars because when we look back to the original uh, invention, is, is an automobile is more fitting compared to the word car. Um, this is important because at the time of the automobile, no longer did they have to use animals or um, other sources that weren't as efficient like steam power or anything like that. Um, so in a scholarly article named History of the Automobile in the book Gasoline Engine Management, affiliated with Carl Heinz Dietrich and Dietrich Kuhlgoss in 2005, they shed light on who actually made the first automobile, which is Carl Benz. Carl Benz was born in 1884 in Germany. He was a mechanical engineer and was also credited with building the first actual automobile. So this is the first automobile that he made, whether this is a reproduction or not, um, I was not sure. Uh, as you can see, it has three wheels. Um, it uses uses an internal combustion engine, which is on, on the back, run by a chain. Um, as you can see, there's no steering wheel, but it has kind of like a handlebar system. The steering wheel had not been uh, brought yet. A big part of his invention was the internal combustion engine, um, made by NTM Lenoy, uh, patented single-cylinder two-stroke engine in 1860. Um, it combines all of the power into one small unit which is important for the production of the automobile. Um, and it was made to be, like I said, more efficient than the uh, horses and stuff of that day. Um, as you can see, this is a one, two, three, four cylinder engine. Uh, Benz uses the one cylinder en engine, so basically all of this is gone. It's a very compact uh, unit, which made it lighter and was also more efficient. Uh, today's cars use four, six, and eight cylinders. So um, after the invention of the automobile, um, they weren't really popular because not a lot of people made them and they were very expensive. Um, not everybody was able to afford one. Uh, like you and me probably couldn't afford one depending on your parents. Um, after Henry Ford came along as well, it changed. Henry Ford was born in 1863 and grew, grew up on a farm, worked multiple manufacturing jobs around uh, his hometown. He was eventually hired by Edison Illuminating Company as an engineer, and uh, while he did that, he developed the Ford Quadricycle. Um, this was his first kind of toe dipping into it. This is the Quadricycle here. Um, he had some success with it. It wasn't really ever produced, uh, but because of this, he opened Ford Motor Company in 1903. And his second vehicle is the Model T, which I'm sure most of you have heard about and um, was really popular. Um, History's online article, Automobiles, from the work The Reader's Companion to American History, um, described that Henry's Ford assembly line helped the auto industry boom and popularized the automobile for an everyday people. So in 1913, Ford um, brought and installed his first assembly line, and um, he's able to produce a lot more cars in a lot less time. Um, at that time, the, before this, he was able to make a car in like a day but now they're able to do up to like 146 an hour. So if you look closely in this picture, there are multiple cars lined up and they have each person doing one individual job. And this makes it much quicker um, because they're able to put them together quickly. So what this does for him and for people of America and so forth, further out, is that it makes cars more affordable. Um, and so they're able to sell more, but he's also able to pay his workers more, and so that makes sure that the cars are good for those who buy them. Um, 
by the time that the Model T was really being widely produced, uh, price fell from $800 to about $300. Uh, by 1927, there were over 15 million made, which was about half of the cars on the planet at that time. Um, the interstate highway system is um, Please pardon this interruption. Very important it is now 115, and all juniors are to report to the AC. It gave. And be sure to bring a number, number two pencil with you. Again, bring a number two pencil, and juniors, go to the AC, please. Thank you. Let me restart. In between this time, in between Ford and, um, and the interstate, um, there was some designing going on. And, um, and Peter Roberts' work, The Collector's History of the Automobile, he explains that the theme of the 30s was transportation that was, quote, expensive to buy and to run, trans inexpensive to run and to buy transportation. And so this helped shape what automakers were going for after the Model T was, was brought around. And so another thing that helped shape that was the interstate system. Um, in 50, 1956, uh, Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Highway Act and it was designed to keep drivers um, quickly moving and um, more safely and the ability to flush out an entire city of people if necessary for an event. Um, and so what this did was this encouraged automakers like Ford and like others that came along to build cars that were more reliable and could go further and were more comfortable for people. Um, so today, um, and growth over the years, we had air conditioning made in the 30s. Four-wheel drive was eventually um, made for people to go places that you couldn't before. Um, electronic fuel injection was important um, because people could just start their cars and go rather than um, carbureted motors, which were often, uh, which was like the single cylinder motor that was fairly inefficient and not always trustworthy. Um, airbags in 1952 were also important because it made um, safer driving and uh, made people more comfortable to go faster speeds. And lastly, um, hybrid cars that are just now coming along um, to help save energy and to be more efficient. Today, there are almost 250 million cars in the United States, which is close to one car for every person here in the country. In 2005, record setting sales of 17.5 million cars was set, um, and that is a ton of cars. The industry is growing with cars being more focused towards technology and self-intelligence such as now you're hearing about cars driving themselves um, and better GPS and everything else. So today, I've told you about the beginning of cars, cars being available, being made available for everybody and um, where cars are at today. Um, hopefully now when you're sharing those memories driving in your cars with other people, it will 